All right, well, over the past few days, uh, we have been in Normandy for the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, been with Andrew Biggio and the rifle uh, with four veterans of the Second World War. And right now, we are at an Italian reenactors camp. So these are uh, Italians who reenact American soldiers from World War II, who do like living history type stuff. They've got a whole bunch of vehicles. One of the guys who was with us, Bill Soule, uh, was in a field artillery unit and drove one of the trucks that they have here today. So anyway, uh, we're gonna have dinner with these guys and uh, have Bill tell us a, a little bit about the vehicle that he drove in World War II. All right, so the place where we are at right now is honestly cool as heck. I mean, take a look at this place. Now, during the Battle of Normandy, uh, this chateau, which is south of the town of signy sur mer which is kind of in between Utah and Omaha Beach, uh, this place served as the headquarters for the press corps. So, uh, headquarters, I'm kind of using that term loosely. But, but you would have had people here uh, reporting and sending out reports, uh, people like Ernie Pyle, and Lee Miller and Walter Cronkite and Robert Kappa. Uh, so anyway, while the, the veterans are eating dinner, uh, I thought we'd take a, a quick look around this place because it's really, really fascinating. All right, now we are a little bit squeezed for time right now, so I've got to make this fast. But right now we are in one of the outer buildings, uh, the barn where I actually keep the cattle. Uh, this was a working farm, of course, as you might expect, in 1944. And here is the man who was the owner of the farm. His name was Dumilly Hamill, but he was not here in 1944. Uh, in 1940, of course, that's when the invasion of France had begun, and Dumilly Hamill was actually taken prisoner. Uh, so he was held in a camp in Germany, uh, I think until 1943. I, I might be incorrect on that. These are some sketches that Dumilly Hamill made. Uh, so they have, for the 80th anniversary of D-Day, they have this exhibition um, talking about the farm and about the family and some of the things that happened here. Uh, here are some letters that Dumilly Hamill wrote home to his wife, uh, some of them which have been censored and returned. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, these are things that, that he wrote home to his wife while he was in the camp. Yeah, so this is really fascinating. Now, while in the camp, he made friends with another prisoner who was a very gifted artist and here on display are some of the sketches that, that this artist made of life in the camp. So here you can see where they had put on uh, like some kind of a show. Uh, here it looks like we got some work that's being done, playing cards. Uh, so this gives us, you know, where we didn't have a camera, this gives us a unique look at life inside of a German work camp during World War II, and we actually get to see some of the faces of the men who were there. So this is super fascinating. So here's a religious service that's taking place. One of the German guards. I mean, this is this guy was incredibly talented. I my artistic skills go about as far as like stick figures, um, but yeah, this is really something. Here in this section of their setup here, they're showing some artifacts and displays associated with the 1st U.S. Army 
press camp. Uh, so Bradley would have had a headquarters not too far from here, would have checked in regularly to you know give updates to the reporters. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, you have uh, like Robert Kappa and Lee Miller and Walter Cronkite. You had, we would have had a lot of people here. Speaking of Robert Kappa, they have the model of camera that he used for his famous pictures of D-Day on display here. Uh, and then, you know, for somebody like me who is really into videography and documenting things and telling stories visually, uh, th this is really something else. Like I would love to have one of these cameras right here. So this is more of a, a mobile camera, uh, a lot of signal core uh, footage was shot using this model right here and then some of the more you know high-end stuff would be shot with these types of film cameras uh, if you go back here uh, this is something that I've never seen before uh, this is a portable dark room so uh, this was so that you could develop your pictures on the fly and we go up here looks like uh, looks like we got old Ernie Pyle uh, right here sitting with some soldiers speaking of Ernie Pyle uh, he would the, the reporters would typically go out for about three days in the field and then they would come back here and uh, Ernie Pyle was was known to kind of pinpoint guys who maybe needed a little bit of a rest and then find an excuse for them to come back to this camp and, and get a few days away from the front yeah, this is incredibly fascinating. All right, now I mentioned how one of the veterans on our trip, Bill Soule, was in a field artillery unit that was attached to the 80th Infantry Division in World War II. And he drove one of these vehicles right here, this Deuce and a Half, and uh, was responsible for, for getting ammunition and supplies uh, up to the front line, which was a super important job. Anyway, we have something kind of cool that we're going to be doing here in just a moment uh, with Bill and, uh, and this Deuce and a Half. We are in a service battery, <laughs> battalion service battery, field artillery, and we use these to transport all the vehicle, um, gasoline, water, food, and ammunition to the batteries. And this is the only way you can get them there in the truck. Look at a picture. Yep. Oh, sure yeah. With me sitting in the back, waiting my. And one of these? Yeah. Well, I saw. Yeah. Well, I saw the way your eyes lit up when you saw this vehicle and how much memories it brought back. And we wanted to put you in it so you could fire it up again. Yeah, they're gonna let you fire it up. But in the meantime, I saw a nice painting. It was a French guy in this building making homemade paintings. And we wanted to present this painting to you. Pulling the vehicle right off the sand at the beach. Yeah. So this is yours, Bill. A gift from Normandy. A gift from our trip, our project to you, my friend. 80 years ago, that was you coming off the sand. Here you go. Yeah, they don't want to take a picture with you without holding it. You want to hold it? There you go. This way, Dad. You remember what it sounded like? Remember what it sounded like? Yeah, pretty loud. Well, you're going to hear it right now because they're going to let you fire it up. Right? Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good. You want to get in? Yeah. All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is the one. Make sure I can. No, lots of fire. I mean, yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. 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 Here we
Hey, go. Big Put him a touch. Can we get everybody up front? Yeah. Ah, 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 So uh, this is crazy. Um, we just had a 100-year-old man commit grand theft auto with a deuce and a half from World War II. I think he was supposed to just start it up. I don't think he was supposed to take off like that. <laughs> it all comes okay. back. Well, uh, well, it does. Well, well, gone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrified right now. <laughs> when was, the, kid, the kid was smiling. Lopez gets it horrified. driven a year and a half. <laughs> what do you do? That, uh, I don't know what to do. That, that I've never had this happen awesome. before. That was I've never had this happen, happen before. Have fun. <laughs> He's having a blast. <laughs> Just oh, throw him away. Catch your vibe right now. He has no Why? rest today. He knows what he's doing. Take the, uh, we're going to take the wheelchair back down. Are you sure? Hey, my friend, you got the wheel, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> Wild Bill! And by the way, he has not driven in over a year and a half. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Bill. Hey, so, uh, so when was the last time you drove one of those? Well, almost a hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't do you didn't do too bad. <laughs> We've made our way over to Omaha Beach and a, a lot of the, the men who fought in Europe came ashore right here, not necessarily on D-Day, but in, in the weeks and months after. So uh, a couple of the guys who are on the trip with us came ashore right here and then made it to the front line and then continued to fight their way through Europe. So uh, we're going to walk the beach with a few of them here this morning. Uh, no, the, the main thing was to get off the beach, get on, to, get onto dry land, and, and get off the beach, and, and go inland as fast as you could. What, uh, what outfit were you in, and, and what was your role? Oh, well, I was the uh, uh, 26th division at the time, and I was a, a lead scout, forward scout, 
and uh, 328th Infantry Battalion effort, and uh, I was an escort intelligence. Okay. Can you remember when you guys went into combat for the first time? Like when you had an engagement uh, with the enemy? I, I think the, the first time there was any shots fired was at night. And uh, uh, we were scared. And we were young kids, 20-year-old kids. So we were scared. And uh, actually, uh, the pro little humor into it, when in the morning when we looked out on, over the, the, the wall that we were behind, uh, we found a couple of dead cows. So that's how we were <laughs> the first shots. <laughs> <laughs> what, one last question. What, uh, what, what lessons did you come out of the war with that you think the, the younger generation could learn from today? Oh, that's a bro pretty broad question. <laughs> and uh, first of all, uh, history is not being taught uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the American schools the way I, I remember. Uh, I was talking to a, a young man before from Germany, and he was telling me that uh, German schools are very much in detail about World War II and, and Nazism and so forth, and what went on and what should go on. Uh, we don't seem to be reflecting on the mistakes we made in the past. And our kids are growing up without any of that history. Bruce Soul, uh, Bill Soul's son. Uh, it's been a pretty emotional week. We've been here, uh, especially for my dad, but surprisingly for me. Some of the stories he's told and has been telling about his experiences, uh, seeing it firsthand, first time, it's uh, it's pretty moving. The people are exceptionally wonderful. Uh, the local French folks uh, the, uh, and the soldiers. The soldiers at the celebration yesterday were wonderful. Uh, every soldier that we've seen has been appreciative of what he's done. And the knowledge that they have and the understanding of they, they didn't really understand why they were doing it and what they were doing, but they were doing it well. And they that's what they said. They had a job to do and that was it. Do the job, get it done, move on next. They didn't have the big picture, but they understood they were part of a bigger, bigger action and it was important for them they felt to continue and do the job that they were trained to do. We were moving so fast, we didn't have a chance to really look around. It's a, we get us off the beach and get out of here. And we landed further down. We wouldn't have these big cliffs up here, you know. Wow. So, do you remember what the beach looked like? Was it like this? It's like this? Yeah. 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 But the oh. sea is but very the, rough. But the beach was further out, way out, mm. you know. Yeah. This, uh, what, what kind of memories does this bring up for you, walking this beach after 80 years? Not good, I'll tell you. It wasn't good. Was it very rough that day? The seas? No, it was about the same as it is today. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have any trouble getting in at all. Fast as we, they told us to get off the beach as fast as we could. Mm. You know, because they didn't know the planes would be coming in straight. Yeah. Do you remember when that was that you guys came ashore? Lord, uh, July. I can't remember the date. Yeah. Wow. 
So, so after coming ashore, what was the next step? Where did you guys go from there? We had to get up and get out of here. And then we went further down the way to St. Louis. We went down that way. Yeah. Yeah. One last question. Do, do you remember when you saw combat for the first time? Yeah, down near St. Louis, the town of Laval. <laughs> the town of Laval. Going down St. Louis. St. Louis. Okay, can you describe that day for me? We pulled into the village, it was quiet, because the infantry had drove them all out of there. The infantry drove them all out of there. So, so we went right through without any problem. That's when they took a lot of prisoners. Mm. Yeah. That's about all. We kept right on going. And we wouldn't, they wouldn't tell us anything either. They kept our toes to keep your mouth shut. You know. Well, Bill, appreciate what you guys did, and thank you for uh, allowing me to share this moment with you. Appreciate it, man.